In this video, we're going to be exploring one of the most frequently asked React interview question. How do you update the value of the state in the parent component from a child component? For example, what I have, what I've taken is we have a class component called as counter. Uh, we have this dot state, the value of the count is initially set to zero. And that particular state value is being used in our render method. I have defined another component called as a button, which is a function component, which is returning this particular react element for button. And we have been using it here. Now, on click of a button, which is in the child component, we are supposed to be updating the value of the state in the parent component. Now, how do we do this? In this, we'll be taking this simple example. In the next uh, section, we're going to be taking a real world scenario of why people are asking these questions because it is very widely used in React. Now, if I want to update the value of the state in my parent component, I should have a method defined uh, in the parent component. I'll say handle up. Now, you have to keep in mind that inside this particular handle up method, the value of this keyword is going to be undefined. Uh, hence, I will bind it in my constructor. I'll say this dot handle up is equal to this dot handle up dot bind of this. Now, this particular method, I will need to invoke this method based on clicking of a button in the child component. So what we can do is the same method, I can pass it down as a prop to my child component. I'll now say a button handle up is equal to this dot handle up. So that particular method, I'm passing it down as a prop to my child component. And in my child component, I can now write on click is equal to whatever value that you're exchanging between parent to child is gonna be passed via props. And props right now is going to be this handle up function. So I can say props dot handle up. Now by doing this, whenever the user clicks on the button in the child component, we can invoke a method defined in the parent component. Now, before we update the state, let us just check the value and see if the linking is done properly. I'll now say up button clicked. I will come back to my browser, reload the page. When I now click on up, you can see that up button clicked was executed. Now what I can do is I can now from here update the state via the this dot set state method. I will pass an updater function to this. Uh, we do require the previous state. So I'll say prof state. And what we want to change is the value of the count, which is going to be prof state dot count plus one. Now by doing this, uh, I'll come back, reload the page. When I now click on up, you can see that we are able to successfully update the value of the state in the parent by the child component. Now let's move on to a slightly more real world example. Uh, what I have is I have a component called as an employees list. Let me just bring up that particular page. Now, as you can see, I am basically listing the employees. The employees are being listed in a tabular format. And you have a button which says remove. So on click of the remove, that particular employees information needs to be removed from the web page. Now, the setup that I have right now is I have a component called as employee list. And in the state, we have employees, which is an array of objects. And then in the render, I'm listing my employees. I'm displaying in a tabular format. I have a table. And then in the body, I am looping over or I'm mapping over my employees information within my state. Now, what this particular map method is returning is it is returning each of the employee object but the presentation of that is being done in a completely different component. Now, as you can see, the remove button is right now in the child component, but the state is being maintained in the parent component. This is the real world scenario of 
updating the state based on an event that occurs in the child. Now, the way you can do this is again by the concepts that we learned in the previous video. We can define a method in the parent. I can now say handle remove. Now, whenever the user is going to click on the remove button, we need to notify which employees was is supposed to be removed. So I'll now say that uh, whenever the user is going to click on the remove button, we are primarily going to be passing an ID of the employee. Let me do a console.log. I'll say console.log emp uh, ID is the value of the ID. Now, again, keep in mind, uh, whenever I want to use the set state method, I will be doing it on the this dot set state. Uh, at this point of time, the value of this is going to be undefined. Uh, I'll now say this dot handle remove is equal to this dot handle remove dot bind of this. So at this point of time, I'm setting the context of the, this keyword to be the current component or the current object in the handle remove function. So this particular handle remove method, I will pass it as a prop down. I'll say handle remove is going to be this dot handle remove. And then what I can do is this time around, I'll say on click props dot handle remove. But again, at this point of time, I will need to specify which employee ID you're removing. And again, keep in mind, if you want to pass arguments to your uh, functions, that is your event handler functions, you cannot do it this in line because that is going to be executing the code immediately. What you'll have is you'll have a function and inside that you will invoke that particular function. You'll now say handle remove uh, and then you're going to be passing the ID of the employee. So when you come back and reload the page, you can see that this is the employee ID four. When I click on uh, remove, let me go to my console. Looks like we have some kind of an error. It says uh, reference error ID is not defined. Of course, it's not going to be ID. It is props.id. Come back, reload the page. When you click on remove, it now tells you that employee ID four, employee ID is two. So keep in mind, whenever you want to pass arguments to your event handler functions, it needs to be wrapped inside another function because once the user is going to click on the button, then this function gets executed and the statements inside that function gets executed. So by doing this, the next thing is going to happen is I just need to filter out and update the value of my state. Uh, the way we can do that is we can do this dot set state. We'll use an updater function. We do require the previous state. Uh, we will say that our employees will now become brief state dot employees. I'll use an filter method. We'll say employee and we would want all the employee whose ID is not equal to the ID that has been passed. So by doing this, what's going to happen right now is when I come back, reload the page, if I click on John, you can see that John gets removed from the list. If I say Sam, Sam gets removed from that list. Now you can also ask a user, um, as you can see, the moment the user is clicking, um, this is just removing that particular record from the page. What you can also do here is you can ask the user const confirm uh, remove. You can say window.confirm. Are you sure? And if the user says, okay, then that's going to be a truthy value. If he clicks on cancel, then that's going to be a falsy value. So I'll say confirm remove. If it's confirm remove only then you invoke this particular function or only then call that particular function from the parent. So when you now come back, reload the page, when you click on remove, it's going to ask you, are you sure if you do cancel, nothing happens. If you say, okay, then that particular record gets removed. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.